Thank you everyone for joining. Today, Sam and I are going to be walking through our experience over the last few years in the syndicated audience space, both with the off the shelf and custom audiences. Uh, right off the bat, uh, quick intros. I am Blaine Britton. I'm the SVP of data strategy at Starista. Have been with the company for about eight years now. And I lead a team of what I call data unicorns, uh, meaning people who are really creative with um, how they are leveraging the data that Starista has access to, uh, but not just creative, able to go in, uh, really massage the data, manipulate it, and get data segments that um, people haven't thought of um, how to create in the past. And I think that's been something that's been a really key driver and catalyst for conversations that Starista has been able to have over the years uh, with folks like Sam. Uh, Sam, I'll kick it over to you to introduce yourself and what you do over at LiveRamp. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Blaine. Excited to be here. Hey, everyone. Um, really excited to talk to you about custom segments and get started. My name is Sam Ray. I'm a BD director on the data marketplace team over at LiveRamp. I head up and lead the audience solutions team. Um, so we're sort of looked at as your third-party data experts, strategists, um, consultants, you know, your trusted advisors when it comes to all the different audiences and segments that live within the data marketplace. Um, you know, the data marketplace hosts over 190 different data providers. Uh, the syndicated segments that are available in there that, that we monetize or help monetize for our partners, you know, there's over 250,000 of them, and they pretty much cover targeting for any type of, of audience, really, from B2B to CPG to TV viewership to auto to travel, uh, you name it, we probably have uh, some data for it. However, you know, some of the off-the-shelf stuff doesn't always uh, put the bill when you're trying to target that specific or granular audience that's um, is more likely to convert or perform. So, you know, we're really going to talk about how to leverage and um, think about building custom audiences for your campaigns. And 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 my team specifically, the audience solutions team, you know, we can be reached at data marketplace at liveramp.com. That's your hotline. And yeah, we receive hundreds of audience requests, you know, every week uh, from brands, platforms, agencies, publishers, even other data providers, if you believe it or not. So we really, uh, you know, see it from all sides and, and our experience there with helping you find the best data is just in terms of the volumes that we see. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. And Sam gets paid for every reference he makes to data marketplace at liveramp.com. So uh, <laughs> don't be surprised if you hear that again, and we definitely encourage it. So <laughs> Uh, with our uh, attendees in mind, um, trying to make sure that we can keep your attention for more than uh, six minutes, uh, really want to answer that question of what's in it for you, the viewer. Um, so definitely understand that everyone here is interested in learning about custom audiences versus syndicated audiences. But to that end, I think there's a lot of confusion, uh, maybe not confusion, but uh, lack of clarity on what we're talking about when we say syndicated audience or off the shelf audience or custom segments or custom recommendations. So Sam, uh, before I jump in, um, to our goals. Uh, do you mind giving a quick uh, definition of each of those things, syndicated, off the shelf, and custom? Yeah, I, th I think it's important to kind of define exactly what we're talking about when it comes to a syndicated or off the shelf segment versus what uh, someone can uh, think of when they think of a custom segment. Uh, syndicated and off the shelf, you know, that. Those, those are the same thing, right? A syndicated or off-the-shelf segment is basically a pre-built audience uh, by a data provider um, that is available for sort of immediate distribution and activation uh, from the data marketplace or, or whatever platform you're using um, for your campaigns. And, and these audiences, you know, are typically pretty general. Um, obviously, you know, syndicated taxonomies can get into more specific targeting criteria and, and uh, have uh, certain attributes or specific collection methods applied to them. But, um, you know, a demographic audience targeting a certain gender or household income or even like a past purchase audience for a certain product, all these are pretty much pre-built for, for easy targeting um, to the, I guess, you know, 
most in-demand audience is uh, I'm actually looking for. Um, a syndicated audience targeting uh, minivan owners um, could be used for, you know, an in-market for minivans campaign, or it could be used for targeting, you know, a, a bombs on the go uh, campaign. But what you have to think about when it comes to syndicated or off-the-shelf audiences is those are just ready to be applied to any campaign, uh, no matter the use case, goal, target, or objective. A custom audience is basically anything that's not off the shelf or not listed as syndicated. Um, you know, it's something where you're looking for a little bit more granularity or a little bit more, uh, you know, bespoke sort of um, collection uh, data points to be aggregated and added in to, a, to an audience for a segment that's for a specific advertiser, for a specific target on a specific campaign. And through the data marketplace, you know, those custom audiences, you won't be able to find in those 250,000 uh, public, publicly listed uh, segments in, in the taxonomy. Those will be made available to advertisers sort of privately in their accounts or in their uh, seats at whatever DSP or downstream platform um, that you're using. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the difference. And um, we'll get into some best practices in a second. But basically syndicated off the shelf, anything you see listed, custom, anything that's not there. Yeah, that's a, a great definition. And thanks for, for sharing that. Um, yeah, you would think with 250,000 off the shelf segments, we'd have everything covered. But uh, as you'll learn in this presentation, there are still plenty to do, uh, despite having the coverage that uh, the data marketplace has. So just to quickly run through uh, the flow of this presentation, we're going to talk about when a custom segment might be necessary, how Sam and his team goes about um, evaluating existing off-the-shelf segments to find out who is capable of building custom segments. And then finally, uh, we're going to go over some client success stories, use cases, and creative solutions that we've come across um, in each of our respective organizations and how we solve those challenges on behalf of the advertisers that we work with. So first off, uh, the question of how do you know when to build a custom audience? So there are a few examples here that you can see, but um, really the time for a custom audience um, comes um, on both sides of the spectrum. Um, as you can see with the limited target audience, this is something that's a very niche audience, something that most people wouldn't even think to build an audience for. Uh, so left-handed golfers is... Um, definitely a population out there that exists. Uh, I think if you look at the marketplace right now, you would be hard pressed to find a great fit for left-handed golfers. So uh, with that in mind, um, just finding out who has golfers, who has golfing equipment um, can be a really good starting point for taking that limited seed audience, that uh, perfect fit for your customer and finding out if a data provider is capable of expanding their existing off-the-shelf audiences into a custom audience proposal. So when we say limited target audience, the custom segment becomes really pertinent for expanding the reach, expanding the volume, uh, giving the campaign a better chance to succeed because you're reaching more people. Um, this is probably the most fun part of uh, the request that Sam sends over just because, uh, and Sam, please feel free to share um, two or three of the wildest requests you've received. Um, we get to see a subset of those and received some of them ourselves, but I think you all will get a kick out of some of these that Sam brings up. Yeah, and um, you know, some of these are real, some of them might be just fun examples, uh, but we'll let you guys sort of be the judge or, or feel free to drop in the chat what you think and we can spend some time at the end maybe uh, seeing what other crazy custom requests you guys have come up with. But, um, you know, just to reiterate sort of what Blaine said, that a good strategy and when it comes to sort of understanding uh, how or who or what uh, custom audiences are possible is definitely always looking at the at the syndicated ones that are listed first. Um, I think you know we always want to try to fulfill your audience needs by recommending or activating syndicated off the shelf 
segments. Um, so, you know, if you think that your, your request for an audience is custom and crazy and, and you know, you think someone's going to need to build it custom, definitely always just search through what's available off the shelf first because you may be able to find what you're looking for. And if you do, that's great. Go for it. You know, activate what you need off the shelf, but also, you know, use the category level of the taxonomies that are listed that the data providers have sort of built and, and pushed into the platform to identify who you think you can help. Um, Blaine said, you know, left-handed golfers. Well, if a data provider has a left-handed user syndicated segment and a golfer segment, then we know we can probably reach out or, or, or have that data provider combine those two like audience sets into one custom segment that qualifies left-handed people and qualifies them for golfers. And that's really like the first type of custom audience that you can think about is just when, when multiple pre-built syndicated segments can be combined using Boogie or Andor logic in a certain way to uh, create something new. Um, left-handed scissor cutters uh, may sound familiar as an example or a real request, but same logic applies, right? Someone has, you know, past purchase scissor buyers and they're able to target people who they know are left-handed and they can just combine those pre-built segments um, and get you what you need custom. Same goes for any sort of like multiple category level qualifiers, like adding, in, finding a, a household income 150 plus and in market for kittens and past purchase pet toothpaste. Again, maybe real, maybe not. Th that would be an example of where you're combining different data sets from different categories to create something new uh, via custom. Um, the next sort of you know more fun custom requests are the ones that basically be need to be built from scratch. You know when nothing really exists off the shelf for what you're looking for. So that data provider needs to go out there, source it, collect it. Uh, upload it and, you know, uh, essentially build the audience from scratch. Um, some of uh, these, these types of built from scratch audiences, though, can also be identified by data providers having syndicated segments in that category. So if uh, a data provider has B2B segments that target um, people who are farmers, or work in uh, some sort of SIC level industry that has to do with uh, grain or wheat or cattle or something like that, but they're specifically looking for pork producers and swine vets, then that might be a good data provider to go out to and say, hey, can you get a little bit more granular here with your B2B data sets to find this specific you know, pig farmer only um, audience? Um, and you know that that's not just for B2B, right? You can you see this at the product level. If a CPG uh, data provider has toilet paper buyers and they break out two or three brands that they're able to uh, identify past purchasers for, they're most likely gonna be able to build a custom segment for maybe a brand you don't see listed there. Um, so that's really how you'd wanna go about sort of understanding what data providers have categories for the custom audiences that you're looking to target. Nice. Thanks, Sam. I just had the thought today. I uh, grew up in a farming community, so I could probably help you with some of those pork decision makers that kind of know how they think. Those used to be my people <laughs> in the town that I grew up. Um, another one that I'll throw out there as a real or not would be rodeo attendees who saw an Alabama concert and had a child in a mutton busting contest last night. It's a pretty limited audience, mm. but uh, that's yeah. the type of thing that uh, you might come across. Um, so quickly yeah. keep us on task because I could go uh, all day on this slide. But um, some of the other reasons for a custom segment creation would be waning performance of existing off-the-shelf segments. Um, there's this suspicion that you've got the uh, target audience pretty close to correct, but since it's so competitive, so kind of weaving these two uh, pills together, um, take something like uh, Star Wars fans. This is something that uh, there's plenty of merchandise, pl plenty of competitive programming, shows, things of that nature. So you have a lot of different competing interests um, going after the 
quote unquote, self-reported Star Wars fans. So being able to take that audience and then really understand what the audience composition is, how they break out in terms of age, gender, generations, uh, perhaps even the B2B component, um, being able to break out that Star Wars fan into multiple segments that you can test, um, evaluate, and, and really make sure that your messaging is on target. Um, the data is driving creative decisions. So you are talking to Star Wars fan who is a uh, recent interest versus the, the lifers. Being able to break out those audiences in clusters um, is a really effective way to bring in a custom segment to help your advertiser achieve those results. So sort of uh, on the note of waning performance and hyper competitive space, that's a really good example and even one that I believe I um, touch on a little bit later. And then uh, finally, and to keep us moving, um, new customer targets. There are always um, events popping up. Uh, some of the more uh, traditional recurring would be Super Bowl, but uh, a lot of times you'll have these once in a lifetime generational segments. And so uh, you have to tap into uh, your seasonal collection, your ability to create custom audiences on the fly and be able to meet those custom data needs. Um, so a lot of different uh, reasons that a custom audience may be required, but uh, I think Sam's recap um, and overview of how to go about finding the data providers who might be able to help is a great one. You start at the category and then you find out if they can go more granular. And if so, how do they do it? Sam, anything to add there? Yeah, you know, I just, we're, we're talking about all these funny requests just because we're uh, trying to keep it light and sort of, you know, love when we get those. But I, I would just say never hesitate to, to reach out about a custom audience because, uh, again, we'll, we'll touch on this at the end, but uh, these may seem like crazy requests that, you know, we actually like have a data provider for. So um, the what's possible via the, the collection methodologies and the uh, sources that our data providers have um, is pretty phenomenal in terms of what's out there that that is addressable and can be collected. Um, you know, for example, things like past purchase of like a new product or a very you know specific niche product or even TV viewership ad exposure segment. So who saw what commercial on TV? And even, you know, in the B2B realm, targeting uh, users that work at a specific company, like these are all, these all may seem like crazy customer requests where, you know, the data on it may not be possible, but you'd be surprised. A lot of this stuff is actually doable through all the products and solutions and partners that we work with. Awesome. Yeah. And so um, to take that and kind of build on it, and a lot of this we have hinted at um, in our discussion so far, but uh, the next couple slides uh, will really emphasize uh, best practices, things that we've seen work over the years. Um, first, from the data provider perspective, um, I will say from the Starista perspective, but really any data provider, um, this would be something that uh, we would recommend uh, also with uh, our fusion partners. This is something that uh, we recommend to them as well. Um, it's to test with many audiences uh, just because there are a number of different creatives being tested, messaging, content. Um, the audiences that you're using should not be the exception. Uh, a lot of times, um, the only way you know what works is by finding out what does not work. So anytime we're um, tasked with a custom audience request, we usually try to come back with at least three to five potential solutions. That way, as the campaign results come in, um, the advertiser can optimize toward the best performing audience and we can continually refine. Um, in that same vein, um, uh, understanding what's coming down the line, uh, what's relevant uh, is something that is really, really, going to be um, a way to get out in front of those custom requests as they come in. Uh, so being able to forecast, say, in the next three months, there's going to be Memorial Day, President's Day, um, 
Christmas, Thanksgiving, um, understanding those trends and being able to build around that is something that's uh, really helpful and helps um, folks like Sam uh, identify your data company as one that can potentially contribute to custom audience builds. Uh, of course, um, something, and if you've heard me talk at all this year, um, it's really about building relationships and getting that feedback on what's working, talking to the advertiser, um, collaborating with them, being a partner and encouraging, um, tell me when it's working, um, especially tell me when it's not working so I can find some solutions that will work. And don't be afraid to uh, test new segments. Uh, we say innovate, but it's um, really just trying out something new, something that we haven't thought of uh, could be, uh, we know that um, the customers are um, likely to convert uh, because they've converted in the past. Uh, but how do we find more customers if we don't have a direct connection with the brand that we're working with? So finding those proxies for customers is something that we've had a lot of success over the years and have found a way to drive results without working directly with the brand. And eventually, if we continue to drive those results, uh, we do start working with the brands, advertisers, and agencies that are leveraging our segments. And uh, from Sam's perspective, I'll let you take this one, Sam. Uh, what, are, what are some of the best practices and things that um, you keep in mind uh, prior to building a custom segment? Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, totally second sort of the overall theme of that last slide, which is just, you know, plan ahead. Make sure that you're getting requests in with enough time to uh, build and launch and, and get out there for whatever seasonal or or campaigns that that you have coming up. Um, from the audience solution sort of like hotline perspective, again, data marketplace at liveroom.com. Um, we we always try to, to qualify and confirm as much information up front as possible. Um, so, you know, the reason uh, why we have these strong partnerships with these data providers is, you know, and, and why when they build these custom segments, they're they're meant to be meaningful and activated is because we require or our partners require that we have all this information before we even reach out. Having you know the client name and the end advertiser, knowing exactly when the campaign is going to go live and how long it's running for. Uh, goals and KPIs. You know what? What do you guys? What is the buyer advertiser actually trying to achieve? The data provider may know something about a specific awareness or conversion or call to action uh, objective that makes sense for a specific data source or, or um, you know, data methodology that they have on their side. So having that stuff and budget as well, you know, what there, it's always good to know sort of a dollar amount on the table. Um, I think, you know, data providers really sort of uh, ask what the budget is always um, if it's not there. Um, so, you know, even if it's just an estimate, um, that always sort of helps data providers understand that there is an opportunity here and they, they get to work building your custom segment and getting out to you. And then obviously um, they need to know where it's going, um, whether that's social or a DSP um, or just any platform where you're looking to activate. Um, you know, ViveRamp has over 600 different platform integrations. So we don't just want the data provider uh, or, or the advertiser to have the custom segment sitting there. We want to get it as far downstream as possible for, for easy activation. So, you know, knowing what platform a DSP it's going to is also something that we'll probably need up front. And then, yeah, custom audience details, anything and everything that uh, you need to tell us about who you're trying to target, um, you know, what the collection method is, what the different attributes are, how you're looking to combine those, um, you know, again, like where you'll be, where you'll be running it and just things that will help us understand how you want it to be built and what uh, sources can be used to, to provide that. Um, you know, pet data is always a fun one and I'll drop another sort of uh, custom segment request in here, but you know, if your custom segment requires people to be owners of a guinea pig or a hamster, definitely let us know that. If you'd like them to also be owners of a chinchilla, ferret, gerbil, mouse, rabbit, or rat, those are important details to include into your custom request as well. The other things to keep in mind, um, based on you know thinking about how complex these custom audiences can get, 
is that as a courtesy, LiveRamp and most, almost all of our data providers don't necessarily require a minimum spend against any custom segments or commits to build them. Um, and we just do that, you know, as a courtesy, it's, it's meaningful to the partnership. We want to make sure we can get our buyers exactly what they need as, as fast as possible. Um, but just keep that in mind when you reach out because, you know, there is a lot of effort and work that goes into sourcing, building, uploading, and distributing these custom segments. And we sort of want to hesitate um, to, to make custom requests, um, you know, if, if spend actually isn't there. Um, it should really be the last step, meaning like you've got the campaign locked in, you know who you want to target, you've worked with Audience Solutions to figure out what segments will work or what custom segments you could build. And then once that custom segment is built, you can easily activate it. So activation is, is definitely imminent when you're making uh, custom requests. Checking feasibility is possible. That's okay. But we just want to avoid sort of like, hey, I was wondering how many people own chinchillas or what sort of size can you find me for um, people who have optimistic dogs? Um, you know, getting into the mind of a dog is, is pretty complicated in the data world. So if you are making that request, um, we definitely want that to, to uh, see some spend or see some activation. And if not, you know, we have strategies to help you and your clients get what you need at the campaign planning process, or maybe it's just an RFP proposal. Um, and we have segments that target, you know, exotic animal owners. Something like that will provide a good proxy for reach or scale and something that you can submit and tell the client like, hey, like here's the segment we have now. Here's what it's forecasting at. When the time comes, we can definitely get more granular and get down to the nitty gritty for, for what you actually need. But um, yeah, those are just some best practices and things to keep in mind when working with the audience solutions team. Awesome. Thanks for that. And yeah, definitely appreciate the uh, curiosity note. Um, uh, that's something where it is quite a bit of effort to put together these custom segments. Um, and it's going to happen. Uh, we want to be as helpful as we can. But um, yeah, to your point, it, it is uh, very difficult, uh, requires a lot of hands on deck to put together audience segments and, and custom proposals. So um, definitely think that this is a great starting point whenever a custom segment may maybe a fit for the campaign. Um, and, and yeah, really appreciate you sharing that, Sam. The recent success stories that uh, we've had at Starista um, with custom segment creation and really how those came about and how they're doing now. And Sam, I know you've got a slide just to go over sort of the, the metrics and um, I, I think what it will really demonstrate is that there is a real appetite to be able to um, tailor a campaign to the correct audience. Um, and there's a trend toward more brands and advertisers requesting custom segments. Uh, but uh, before we get to that, just wanted to go through the different flavors that um, these requests can take. So I've already hit the Star Wars fans, but um, in terms of the age segment expansion for the outdoor retailer. Um, so uh, what that means, and and what the client was doing uh, at the highest level is um, just targeting males based on a certain age uh, range. And what they found is that it worked for a long time, but um, as with most campaigns, the results tend to diminish over time. Uh, and so based on the customer data and recent uh, transactions, we were able to take a small set of that data and uh, use it to find those different clusters. Um, we call them on our side Eagles clusters, but basically a demographic cluster that combines things like uh, age, gender, income, uh, life stage, um, even geo um, to a certain extent, and able to find out of those customers, which of those clusters really stand out. So instead of one giant age plus gender audience, we're able to create um, smaller audiences that are more tailored toward um, the brands, the retailers, um, current customer base. That way they can find more customers that look like their best customer. Some other ideas that we've uh, put in front of this retailer has been um, competitive conquesting, looking at um, 
uh, the public social followers of competing organizations and clustering those so that they can dry, make their creative decision based on um, what their greatest impact is relative to that competitor, meaning if they um, are lower priced than the competitor, then their creative might emphasize that. If they're higher quality, their creative can emphasize that. But it's based on having that uh, more precise audience and having that direct relationship and trust with the client where you are going to have that level of detail and get that feedback so that you can iterate on the segment. That's a big part of this and something that I uh, haven't mentioned up to now, but uh, typically whenever we do engage in these customer requests. We see uh, long-term customer retention, uh, a relationship develop, and just by nature of how Starista does business, uh, oftentimes it opens up more channels for us to work together. So I'd say that's been one of our big success stories over the years. Um, there's also a pretty big B2B component of what we do um, and, and being able to um, really get our foot in the door with say new business or decision makers or having SIC codes available for selection, uh, even education background. This is one that uh, I think probably whenever we first started working together five years ago, Sam was uh, one of the first ones that we worked on where uh, we had audiences of uh, PAC-12 alumni and um, the request was looking for um, current uh, students as well as uh, parents, alums of specific schools within the Big Ten. And so by discovering that we had this Pac-12 conference category, got Sam's uh, team's attention and there was a direct reach out. So uh, we had this one segment that was the catalyst to uh, many uh, more granular segments, but also some segments that uh, we hadn't even put on the market before, uh, looking at those public social followers once again, and understanding that if you're following a university, I'm a longhorn myself, um, typically are either a big fan, uh, an alumni, or a current enrollee. So being able to tap into that and bring just a consumer element to what had historically been a B2B campaign was something that drove really good results. And I think I think uh, just that line of thinking has really been instilled um, with the Starista digital team and is something that uh, we're always thinking of how we can um, drive results on behalf of the advertiser that's using our audiences. So anything to add there? Anything you think I left off, Sam, or should we jump to yours? Yeah, I think I'll just add that, you know, that's just a really good example of sort of the uh, custom like process and how it sort of evolves with a very specific ask around, you know, targeting like at a very deterministic level alumni of a certain college, but through the discovery of followers of, you know, PAC-10 or social media public data that points towards someone who, um, you know, most likely is an alumni, if they follow a certain school on, on social media, is a good way to think about custom segments too. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, syndicated data out there or, you know, ways to maybe not get too granular with uh, who you're trying to target via custom, but based on understanding the sources, you know, the, the buyer and the data provider and live ramp sort of come to agreement that like, hey, this is the closest we're going to get. This is the best we're going to get uh, going back to like the B2B example um, or, or a B2B example. Um, uh, there's been some custom requests for uh, people who are, you know, Academy members. So that vote on the Academy Awards, um, you know, that is a custom audience that's fairly hard to target. There isn't a lot of data out there for that. Um, and even if there was, there most likely wouldn't be a lot of scale. However, you know, any B2B segment that targets someone who's working in the film industry or in cinema or, uh, you know, is a cinematographer or something like that, you know, by, by casting a net around those audiences, you're most likely going to get to what you're uh, looking for, which is also another strategy and just things for buyers to keep in mind. Um, it could start out as a very grand their custom request, but we're going to get you what you need um, as best as we can. Nice. Thanks for that. Now, jumping over to what you're seeing, um, I kind of hinted yeah. at it earlier, but uh, would love it if you could just comment on what we're seeing here. 
Yeah, this, this slide will be really quick. It's really just to show sort of the buyers and data providers on the call that, you know, custom segments are popular um, from the hotline or from the audience solutions team at, at LiveRamp. Um, this is data for last year, and we basically uh, fulfilled or fielded, uh, you know, around two or three custom requests per day. Uh, custom opportunities come in a lot, um, you know, we saw a bunch at the beginning of the year, uh, probably because of, you know, new year campaign and planning seasonality. Um, but last year, you know, we activated over 700 segments from over 50 different data providers. So um, the categories that you're looking at here were where those custom requests uh, kind of fell. Um, so if you're a buyer on the call that has clients that fit into those categories, definitely reach out to us to see what we have. Again, don't think your custom request is so crazy. Just reach out and ask and we'll see what we can do. And if you're a data provider on that call and you're looking on this call and you're looking to get included, you know, in those custom opportunities, here are the categories that people care about. Entertainment is definitely a big one with, you know, all the different things that are possible now with uh, CTV and programmatic TV and things like that. Um, B2B is definitely on the top there just because I think you know, as a category in general, that that's a huge, um, you know, marketing channel. Um, and there are a lot of specific sort of job titles and industries that people are looking for, as well as like ABM segments that that we fulfill custom. Um, and then, you know, just the breakdown of platform brands and agencies that reach out about custom, you know, platforms sort of have the most clients logging in or reaching out on behalf of those. So, so that's what we see there. And then, yeah, brands directly are also very interested in custom segments. And, you know, I think uh, in the future or at least already this year, we've definitely seen a lot more custom requests come in. Um, so again, this is just a snapshot of sort of what we see every day on the ground in the trenches. Um, if you wanna get a broader sort of data marketplace view of things, definitely reach out to us and we can try to, um, you know, get you a, a more holistic view, but just from the audience solutions team, yeah, custom segments are a big part of what we do and, and uh, you know, they're only getting more popular. Yeah, and so um, I, I may have missed this, but these are segments fulfilled. Um, I'm kind of scared to ask how many requests you receive that go unfulfilled uh, or... So, so it's actually a good question because I had to sort of manipulate the Tableau report a little bit to confirm that, you know, that 700 segments activated was actually correct. When I first pulled this, I think it was over like, you know, 1500 custom segments sort of like recommended, but I looked into the data a little bit more and saw, okay, you know, at least half of those get activated and some spend is against it. So if you think about the best practice side, I said before, at least some buyers are, are, are following those directions. And, you know, I think, um, uh, the the revenue numbers that we saw from those custom segments is is really what does the talking. Yeah, that's great, and uh, fifty percent is not bad. I know some salespeople <laughs> that would take that hit rate um, on a daily basis. So that's great. Well, um, I think that um, aside from your closing thoughts and words of wisdom, we're just about to open up to FAQs, but uh, do you want to uh, comment on this, read it, or uh, just kind of let it soak in for a moment? Yeah, I mean, we can let it soak in, I guess. You know, all I try to do, when, or all the audience solutions team uh, tries to do when, when we can or when we have the opportunity is ask as many questions as possible to, to that buyer. You know, the, the more, details we have about who you're trying to target, the better we can recommend and the better we can sort of figure out who to go to to fulfill that, that custom request. Um, you know, I believe in custom audiences. I think uh, I usually say that the sky's the limit when it comes to, to what you want to target. But, um, you know, this is, this is the fun part about our jobs. The, the, the data that is available out there um, is, is pretty phenomenal. Um, and the way we sort of aggregate it, live ramp provides it in a privacy compliant way is I think really important. Um, and just, you know, the better we get at reaching those more granular, uh, more custom audiences, um, the better these campaigns will perform and, and the better place the internet will be. 
Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, I think that's a great thought and uh, eager to open up this chat window and see um, <laughs> how our audience did guessing uh, if any of those requests were real. Believe it or not, all of those custom requests that I mentioned were real requests. Um, in Market for Kittens, that one was a favorite of mine. Um, swine vets and pork producers, that was a good one. Um, you know, owners of chinchillas or ferrets or gerbils, that was real, that was fulfilled. Um, but some other ones that I didn't actually get to were uh, things around, you know, pet personality. Um, we, so we sometimes get a lot of qualitative customer requests around uh, how people think. Um, and I think via like data online or any sort of records or information that is out there that sort of uh, can can read the mind of an end user are always my, my favorite customer requests. Um, you know, I'm not sure how you would target a uh, pet personality or an optimistic dog, uh, users of pets who have a more extroverted personality. That one's pretty tough, but um, surprisingly enough, I think there is a pet data provider out there that could probably have a survey that they send out to their users to say, uh, is your dog optimistic about life? And hey, there you go. That, that's a custom audience. Um, there was another one. I think, Blaine, this was your favorite this one. This is my favorite. Yeah, users who believe that they are direct descendants of wolves. Um, again, other than, I guess, sending a survey out there that says, hey, do you believe you're a direct descendant of, of wolves? Um, I'm, I'm not sure how else you, you could target that, but I think uh, Game of Thrones fans was probably the uh, best segment to go for for that one. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I have to think that's a self-reporter. Um, yeah, I don't I don't think anybody could have thought of that question. Um, but yeah, that that's um, it's always good for a chuckle. Uh, and then uh, how are we going to do this? And so um, you have to always think about um, even if I had that data, how many people would I have? Probably less than 10. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that that's pretty fun. Um, pretty fun stuff. So we'll have to keep an eye out. Any predictions for the future, aside from you and I being at ramp up in two weeks? Um, let's see. Predictions for the future. I think uh, other than, you know, custom segments, just, just getting more and more popular and um, us and, and live ramp sort of helping out all the customers. I think uh, we're going to study the course and definitely uh, for everyone on the call, if you see uh, me and Blaine by the bar uh, talking about custom audience requests, definitely feel free to stop by and, and say hello. Or, or share your favorite uh, custom audience request that you've seen recently. Yeah, for sure. We are going to make a custom audience request out of it. It's ramp up attendees <laughs> who uh, recently hosted a webinar and are currently <laughs> drinking at the bar. It'll be an audience. Yes. Of two. So not privacy compliant, but uh, definitely <laughs> a real audience. So held this screen up just to make sure that uh, if anyone had any questions or uh, wanted to connect with us before ramp up, you have our information and the best way to reach out to us, but really appreciate everyone attending. Sam, thank you very much. Uh, this has been great and look forward to seeing you in person in a couple of weeks. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Blaine. We'll see you at ramp up. Thanks everyone for joining. Feel free to reach out.